Despite his obvious talent and extraordinary attention to detail, self-taught artist John O'Dry didn't grow up thinking that this was a viable career path. But continuously learning new skills, he created the ingredients to not only make his bread and butter, but food for the mind and soul too. Hi, I'm John O'Dry and I do pencil drawings. Welcome to my studio. I think my love for drawing developed at a, a very young age. I grew up in a creative house, my mom's an artist and my dad's an architect. And so my mom particularly encouraged me to, to draw but very gently. She's like a, a very gentle soul. So I don't think I was ever aware of her like pushing art or drawing onto me. But as I grew older, I think it was just this constant thing that had always been around and slowly developed more and more passion over the years for it. I get my inspiration, it's not really from any single source. It's a melting pot of different ideas, but my mom has inspired me a lot. Her work is very like fantastical and inspired by mythology. And she used to read me a lot of fantasy novels when I was a kid to, to put me to sleep. So there's definitely that aspect of my imagination is influenced by like Tolkien and, and stuff like that. And then later on in life, I became really interested in mental health and finding metaphors to try and depict some of the things that I was feeling and that the people, my friends and family around me were, were potentially feeling and the discussions that we were having. I think my inspiration is completely saturated in my lived life, um, where it's hard to figure out what the actual points are. <laughs> Documenting this process on his YouTube channel has seen him gather over 400,000 subscribers. I've chosen pencil because of accessibility. So I started practicing and just creating art in primary school and high school. And so the only medium that I had access to at the time was pencil. And then I think it was out of just familiarity that I, I stuck to it. So this artwork is a rendition that I've been doing of The Three Graces, which is an artwork that's been done by many different artists over the centuries. It's an incredibly beautiful artwork, and I thought that I would try my hand at <laughs> drawing my own version of it. But I didn't want to do it in like the classical way that it was done by everyone else, so I've tried to just put a little bit of a twist on it. So the, the main figure is a deer, and then the space that the deer is sharing is occupied by two wolves. I just thought it was an interesting juxtaposition to have these kind of creatures which are usually at ends with each other, sharing a space, and it might be a hostile or it might be a, a nurturing space, I'm not sure. This is all pencil, but pencil can be used in many different ways, so I'm using normal pencils just to get more finer details in there. I use a whole lot of different kinds of pencils for the drawing. The way it works is you go from 6H all the way to 8B, 6H being the hardest graphite and 8B being the softest graphite. And I prefer working with softer graphite because I find it easier to push it around the page. And then I'll grind down a 9B graphite stick and make powder out of that. And with that powder, I can get a really dark background which has been really useful for adding extra contrast to, to my drawings. Um, and to apply that graphite, I'll use different makeup sponges, which turns out they're really good at applying graphite, not just makeup. Sometimes I'll use cotton wool, and this is a tiny makeup sponge for more detailed areas. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of tools <laughs> to use to push graphite around a piece of paper, and you can just get experimental with it. And if you're looking for honesty and hard-won wisdom about everything for a living, he's happy to share. It's difficult to concentrate for a long period of time. I think any student knows that. I myself struggle with, with concentration. I have ADD or ADHD. And I've basically spent my whole life trying to sit down, focus and draw. And so I'm quite sensitive to my mental state while I'm working. So there's an incredible amount of frustration and anxiety as well, especially if I've finished half of a drawing and then I'm not getting a texture that I'm trying to achieve and feeling like I'm ruining all the hard work that I put into something over the course of like a previous month. There's a whole array of emotions. The inverse of that is also just looking at a piece and you've nailed the texture and it came out exactly the way you wanted it. And it, like there's a huge amount of joy in, in achieving that. So it's a roller coaster of emotion going through a drawing and trying to diminish the anxiety around not getting things the way that you want them to and just try and maximize the appreciation when you do get things right the way that you want to. 
art is kind of like survival for me because it's what I've chosen to pursue as a career. So from, there's a commercial aspect of it for me, but I just can't imagine doing anything else because I, yeah, spending my time trying to think of things to create is the most fulfilling use of my life that I can imagine. I think it's, it's just incredibly fulfilling to have my day-to-day -day life be something that I'm, I'm creating something. I'm, I get to try and think of new things to make. And in its simplest form, that's the most rewarding thing to do. Alongside leaving a legacy by sharing his learning with his 300,000 plus followers on Instagram. Respect. Get more of the Insider Essay online. Follow, connect, engage, and be inspired to live better with the Insider Essay. Watch the show Monday evenings at 6, repeat Saturday at 1 on S3.